Okay, great, we're back. Let's keep on going. We have image production and evaluation, starting with selection of technical factors. Factors affecting radiographic quality. You have density, contrast, recorded detail, distortion, mass, KVP, OID, the air gap, SID, focal spot size, grids, conversion factors, filtration, film screen combinations, beam restriction, motion, anode heel effect, patient factors, you know, size, pathology, and angle tube, part, and receptor alignment. Then there's technique charts, caliper measurements, fixed versus variable KVP, special considerations, cast, atomic and pathological factors, pediatrics, and contrast media. Then there's automated exposure control, AEC, effects of changing exposure factors on radiographic quality, detector selection, anatomic alignment, and density control. And then there's image receptors, there's system speeds, there's film characteristics, you know, film contrast, film latitude, exposure latitude, their screen characteristics, phosphor type, single versus dub double film screen system. Then there's digital image characteristics, their spatial resolution, the sample frequency, DEL, detector element size, receptor size, and matrix size. And then there's image signal, exposure related, quantum model, SNR, signal to noise ratio, or CNR, contrast to noise ratio. Then there's imaging process and quality assurance, which is film storage, cassette loading, image identification, the methods, the legal considerations, automatic film processors. There's the components to the developer, fixer, the wash, and the dry. There's systems, the transport, replenishment, temperature regulation, recirculation, and dryer. Then there's the maintenance, the startup and shutdown procedure, the removal of cleaning of crossovers, assembly, and centrometric monitoring. Then there's system malfunction, observable effects, possible causes, digital systems, electronic collimation, grayscale rendition or lookup table, edge enhancement, noise suppression, contrast enhancement, and system malfunction. Then there's PACS, the HIS, hospital information system, work list, the RIS, the radiology information system, DICOM and workflow and window and leveling. Then there's criteria for image evaluation. The density, the contrast, the recorded detail, the distortion, the demonstration of anatomical structures, the identification markers, the patient considerations, digital film and artifacts, fog, noise, acceptable range of exposures, exposure indicator determination, gross exposure error, and image degradation. So those are some few things you need to know for the image production and evaluation section. And then we have radiation protection. We'll start with minimizing patient exposure. We have exposure factors, KVP and mass, shielding, rational for use, types, placement, beam restriction, purpose of primary beam restriction and types, for example, collimators, Filtration, effects on skin and organ exposure, effect on average beam energy, NCRP recommendations, exposure reduction, patient positioning, automatic exposure control, AEC, patient communication, image receptors, grids, fluoroscopy, pulsed, exposure factors, grids, positioning, fluoroscopy time, and then there's biological aspects of radiation, the radiosensitivity dose-response relationships, relative tissue radiosensitivities, cell survival and recovery. There's the somatic effects, the short-term versus long-term effects, the acute versus chronic effects, the carcinogenesis, the eye, the thyroid, the reproductive. There's the systematic responses, the CNS, the hemopoietic, skin, the GI. There's embryonic and fetal risk. There's genetic impact, genetic significant dose, and goals of gonadal shielding. And then there's the personal protection, the sources of radiation exposure, the primary x-ray beam, the secondary x-ray beam, scatter and leakage, the patient as the source, and there's basic methods of protection, time distance shielding, there's protective devices, types, attenuation properties, minimal lead equivalent, there's special considerations, there's portable, there's fluoroscopy, protective drapes, protective bucky slot covers, cumulative timers, and there's also guidelines for fluoroscopy in portable units. There's fluoroscopy exposure rates, exposure switches, guidelines, 
Now we're going to move to radiation exposure and monitoring. You know, first the units of measurement, absorbed dose, dose equivalent, exposure. There's dosimeters, there's the different types, the proper use. There's NCRP, recommendations for personal monitoring. There's occupational exposure, public exposure, embryo and fetus exposure, ALARA and dose equivalent limits, and evaluation and maintenance of personal dosimetry records. So that was the radiation protection section. And now we're going to move right to the patient care and education. There's first infection control. There's terminology and basic concepts. A sepsis, medical, surgical, and sterile technique. There's pathogens, fomites, vehicles, vectors, nasocomical infections. Then there's the cycle of infection, pathogen, source of reservoir, susceptible hosts, method of transitions. You know, there's contact, direct, indirect, droplet, airborne, suspended, common vehicle, and vector borne. There's standard precautions, hand washing, gloves, gowns, masks, medical asepsis. There's additional or transmission-based precautions, airborne, droplet, and contact. There's disposal of contaminated materials, linens, needles, patient supplies. And then there's contrast media. There's types and properties. There's appropriateness of contrast media to exam and patient condition. There's the patient history, the pre-medications, the contradictions, the scheduling and sequencing of examinations. There's patient education, the verify of informed consent, the instructions regarding preparation, diet, and medications. There's post-examination instructions. There's venipuncture, the venous anatomy, supplies, procedural techniques. There's administration, routes, different supplies. And then there's complications and reactions. There's local effects. There's systematic effects. There's mild, severe. There's radiographer's response and documentation. And then there's ethical and legal aspects. You know, it starts with the patient rights the informed consent, the confidentiality, the additional rights, the privacy, extent of care, access to information, living will, healthcare proxy, research participation. There's legal issues, you know, the examination requisition, the common terminology, the legal doctrine, and then the ARRT standards of ethics. And then there's interpersonal communication. There's modes of communication, the verbal, written, the nonverbal, the challenges in communication, patient characteristics, explanation of medical terms, strategies to improve understanding. There's the patient education, the explanation of current procedure, the respond to inquiries about other healthcare related services such as CT, MRI, myrography, sonography, nuclear medicine, bone densitometry, clerigree, social services, and rehabilitation. There's physical assistance and transfer. There's patient transfer and movement, body mechanics, balance alignment and movement, patient transfer. There's assisting patients with medical equipment, infusion catheters and pumps, oxygen delivery systems and others such as the nasogastric tubes, urinary catheters and tracheostomy tubes. There's routine monitoring, there's equipment, there's vital signs, there's physical signs and symptoms and documentation. And finally, there's the medical emergencies, the allergic reactions, the cardiac or respiratory arrests, the physical injury or trauma, other medical disorders such as seizures, diabetic reactions. So that's patient care and education. So finally, we got to equipment operation and quality control. We're going to start with the principles of radiation physics. We're going to go into x-ray production, the source of free electrons, the acceleration of electrons, the focusing of electrons, and the deceleration of electrons. And then there's the target interactions, the Bremsstrom, the characteristic, there's the x-ray beam, there's the frequency and wavelength, there's beam characteristics, the quality, quantity, primary versus remnant, the exit, there's the inverse square law, there's also the fundamental properties, you know, the travel in straight lines and ionized matter, there's the photon interactions with matter, there's the Compton effect, photoelectric absorption, coherent or classical scatter, and attenuation by various tissues, such as thickness of body part or type of tissue. And then there's the radiographic equipment. First is the components of the basic radiographic unit, starting with the operating console, and then the x-ray tube construction, the electron sources, the target materials, the induction motor, the automatic exposure control, the radiation detectors, the backup timer, the density adjustments. There's the manual exposure controls, 
beam restriction devices. There's the X-ray generator transformers and rectification systems. There's the basic principles, the phase, pulse, and frequency. There's the fluoroscopy unit, the image intensifier, the viewing system, the recording system, and the automatic brightness control, or ABC. There's the image display. There's the viewing conditions, the spatial resolution, the contrast resolution slash dynamic range. There's the die cam grayscale function and the window level and width functions. There's also the image acquisition and readout. There's the PSP, the flat panel detectors. There's the type of units. There's stationary, portable, dedicated units. There's the accessories, the stationary grids, the bucky assembly, the image receptors. There's quality control of the radiographic equipment and accessories. This starts with the beam restriction the light field to radiation field alignment and the central ray alignment. There's recognition of malfunctions, digital and film screen image receptor systems, you know, the artifacts and the maintenance. Finally, there's the shielding accessories, such as the lead apron testing. So zooming out, here's exactly what you need to know. And this is just the outline. I didn't say anything about anatomy, CRs, actual rules and regulations, measurements, radiographic techniques, this is just the outline, and this is exactly what's on the test. But here's the thing. If you're overwhelmed right now, get excited. You may be saying, get excited about overwhelmed? What are you talking about? Well, now you know exactly what you need to do to get overwhelmed. You probably think of all this stuff in your head. And if you think like this and get overwhelmed, you won't take the action and study. You won't be as efficient, and like some people, you might fail the ART radiography exam. So overwhelm comes from a very specific way you think about things. It's kind of like a recipe. If you do certain ingredients in a certain way, you'll get one result. And if you do other things in other ingredients in another way, you'll get a totally different result. Meaning if you focus something on one way, you get overwhelmed. And if you focus it on another way, you won't. You see, our brains have the power to take experience and pull it apart into a million different completely pieces and be totally overwhelmed. On the other hand, our brains have the power to take a bunch of little experiences and tie them together into one piece and be equally overwhelming. So for the radiography examination, if you think of everything you have to know and remember, all the little small facts, you're going to be overwhelmed. And this same thinking holds true in preparing for the exam. If you try to study and review everything you need to know in a short time, you're going to be completely overwhelmed. Trust me, I did this. I made this two-week challenge for myself, trying to prepare for everything in two weeks. Long story short, I got completely overwhelmed and burnt out. After that, I didn't even want to look at my material for almost a month. So just think of it into five sections. So don't try to think of everything you need to know. Just chunk it down to whatever right size is right for you and where you're at. I don't have time to explain it all here. If you want more free tips on how to prepare and pass the ARRT radiography examination in the easiest way and not get overwhelmed, then I highly suggest you check out my other free video, Three Keys to Pass the Radiography Registry with Ease. This video will explain the exact commonalities between those who passed and those who failed, those who thought it was easy and those who thought it was hard. If you learn and use these three keys, you'll save a lot of time and avoid a lot of stress, frustration, and overwhelm. Plus, there's a link to a free gift and other resources so you can prepare and pass for the radiography examination fast and easily. There should be a link below under this video that says three keys to pass the radiography registry with ease. Go ahead, click that link below and watch the video and I'll be talking to you very soon.